Ani, my name is Amberly Quackajizik and I'm the Guardian Program Manager for Wakatoan. We're all about youth empowerment and prioritizing programming that connects youth and elders to help facilitate knowledge transfer. It's something that's really important to us because we want these teachings to live on with our future generations. A lot of what we think, think about in the forest is the forest industry and how we can harvest trees to make lumber, um, but there's so much more that's out there. Like learning how to build a birch bark canoe. Chuck Commanda is an amazing teacher and makes me happy that he's out there transferring knowledge to our youth. My name's Chuck, I'm from Kitagonzi, Quebec, and I'm Algonquin. Because uh, my grandmother was patient and uh, she's the one that actually took the time to explain what we were doing. And Chuck took us out onto the land and shared his teachings with us. So there were five species involved in making this traditional birch bark canoe. We used birch, cedar, black spruce, black ash, and ironwood. We used birch bark to make the canoe itself, the body. The cedar tree was used to create the gunnels and the ribs and the, the sheeting on the inside. We had to harvest the cedar in the bush and split it using a sledgehammer and wedges. We used a knife and a fro to slice um, really thin sheets of cedar. And then the next day we came in, he took his crooked knife and he, he trimmed all the ribs up and then we inserted the sheeting and the ribs at the same time. And this here is spruce sap. It's like nature's glue. <laughs> It's to make sure that no water gets in. As we went through the build, relationships evolved. I think a lot of trust was built. Um, you're trusting that everyone is doing a good job, doing the lashings tight, making sure the canoe is not going to fall apart. I had an amazing time building this canoe with my team. Wakatoan is full of passionate, knowledgeable land stewards. Making that connection to the people that lived here thousands of years ago, this was all they had for resources and this is what they were able to make with it, like this beautiful but also very functional water vessel. <laughs> Such a cool task of building a canoe like this and then putting it in the water and actually paddling it in this river where, you know, canoes would have paddled before. The feeling that you get when you're on the water with it. Well, I've paddled other canoes in the past and this one here is so responsive and all you can turn on the dime. I feel like I've grown a lot throughout the process of the canoe build. I was so immersed into my culture. I was on the land every single day. I was surrounded by people who wanted to learn. Everyone around me seemed excited about what we were doing. And as a community, you get you know the help from the community as well as that larger sense of purpose and pride at the end. That knowledge is still around. So if you have a chance <laughs> to learn from somebody who knows this knowledge, I definitely would uh, recommend getting involved. One of the best parts about being a guardian is getting to do all these cool projects. Getting to work with your community, learn from your elders, reconnect to the land. It all brings you closer to your cultural roots and it's why it's so important to support these guardian programs. I know how important it is now to continue practicing it and to continue passing it on, and that's the goal of the Guardian program, transferring knowledge.